News segment time. The news. Well, yeah, you got news? Well. News for you. We can always look in here. Well, well you closed it. That was just the... But the, the song. Oh. It's right here. Oh. All right. Let me go to... Because I had just listened to it. For... I was at my roommate's. Uh, the smartest person in any room anywhere in defense of Elon Musk. Uh, what happened to all the good stuff that was in here earlier? Mm. What is that? Planets? Yeah, here's one. James Webb. Ah, oh, James Webb. You know what upsets me about the James Webb? Oh, yeah. Webb? Are they going to change the name? I don't know yet. I haven't heard... It launches in like a month. So just the funniest part about James Webb. And I just learned this. So... Yeah. It's now delayed, not because it's not finished. It's done, as in, as is the title of the article. Mm -hmm. The rocket boosters are delayed, not because of liquid oxygen storage. It's because of uh, who they're using to do it. Uh, National the the Fed asked them to stop using uh, the rocket motors they were using. Mm. Because the rocket motors they were using were designed by the Russians. Mm -hmm. And f so for national security purposes, they're like, please switch to an all-American design. Mm. Even though these rocket motors are like, they're like the best for kerosene. Yeah? Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, they're actually the highest uh, thrust-to-weight ratio rocket motors ever, excluding... The SpaceX's Merlin vacuum engine, that thing's a beast. It's really? so powerful. And, like, maybe excluding the Raptors here in the future. Those might be pretty powerful now, too, once they get those up to their full thing. But, again, those aren't kerosene. Those are all methane. This is a kerosene motor. But, anyways, so, yeah, that's why it's delayed and they can't do it till October. Hmm. But, yeah, you know what upsets about the James Webb, though? What? It's non-visible light. Non-visible light. It's only infrared. It has you can. I guess the only invisible light it does is like red. I guess that that's further stars though. Right? Yeah. So like, I understand for like science purposes. It's like yeah, but then I was just like, but, but what about Hubble? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're planning the Roman telescope, space yeah. telescope. They're gonna put out there with it at some point. I don't know. This is a year so ago. So that's the thing about these powerful telescopes. You can't look through them with like an eyepiece. No. Because they're not visible light telescopes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they uh, and they're just and then the Roman telescope, another infrared telescope. And I'm like, what are you gonna do? Like, there's still like stuff they want to do when they need a space telescope. Uh, but it's just like they can't get one. Because, like, I was reading, uh, they were talking about the, the giant telescope, the Billion Chili, that's using lasers to measure the disturbance of the atmosphere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This thing is, a, I just watched a video on it. This thing is huge. Like, Actually, Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about that, too. The biggest problem with it, what was the, what was the problem? Yeah, because you shoot the laser up and you know where the laser should land. And so then when you look through the telescope... Then you can do all these corrections. They can do all these corrections in the computer to get a pristine image. Oh, I guess maybe this one didn't have that didn't have that problem. But it's this other one they're building. They're building a lot more wide uh, view telescopes oh, really? because that's what the Roman telescope is. Mm -hmm. Because they they want to map more of the night sky. Oh. And look for things like uh, exoplanets, exoplanets, uh, planets that are wanderers. Mm -hmm. They're thinking there's a possibility they could maybe find one mm -hmm. with these new telescopes. And, but this other one, it's like it's and it's also supposed to find asteroids and stuff. This other one they're building, yeah, that's actually really cool. It's actually be complete this year, uh, or it was anyways, in Chile, and it. Uh, it's biggest problem now is satellites. Because when they started construction on it 10 years ago, yeah. well, there weren't SpaceX satellites. No one ever thought there's going to be, and the number of satellites in orbit are literally going to double within three years. You know, no one mm -hmm. ever thought that was going to be a thing. 
And then now, yeah, it happened. <laughs> so like now they're going to take this big wide view, but there's going to be white streaks in it from satellites. But Elon has said, though, he, he started painting them black, the new Starlink satellites. Oh, yeah? So, like, that should help a little bit, but, yeah. like, there's still going to be a ton of them up there. And actually, he had, he stopped, uh, so, they, had, they actually stopped, I didn't realize this, but they hadn't launched any satellites in two months, or done any launches in two months, at least Starlink, anyways. Mm -hmm. That's because they were... They claim, anyways. They're outfitting them with lasers. Hmm. And I heard about this. I read a... Uh... No, who was it? I think I did re read part of the research article for it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, of using x-rays to transmit data in space between satellites. Hmm. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And so the, what, they're not using x-rays. I'm sure they're just going to use some normal laser, probably infrared or something. And they're going to use it to transmit data. Hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, and so that's why they stopped. And now also, uh, Bezos sued him again. Oh, yeah? Something with the FCC and the satellite filings, because Bezos is also trying to do his own space internet service, and is miles behind SpaceX. I see. And so he's like trying to delay them. And then also now there's a, a liquid oxygen shortage. Oh, really? Because hospitals need it, and with this new COVID uh, wave going through, there's not much ox liquid oxygen left. And what baffles me is that SpaceX hasn't built a plant or any of these rocket places or NASA hasn't built their own plant to generate liquid oxygen. Really? That's what baffles me. I'm like, why? I don't know. Oh, and also wastewater treatment plants use it. Oh. The new processes they're doing for wastewater uses oxygen. I see. So it baffles me. I'm like... <laughs> I mean, obviously it's expensive and it would just be cheaper to buy it from somebody. But at the same time, just build the plant and sell the oxygen that you don't use. Yeah. So I'm just like, especially Elon, who's complaining constantly that he has delays in his uh, uh, Starship launches. Wouldn't it be just wiser to build a liquid oxygen plant down there in Texas? You're by the yeah, ocean. You think, I don't know. You've got a solar panel factory out in California. Yeah. So you have a way to provide power, and you have batteries. He literally has <laughs> everything he needs, and he has, like, a state-of-the-art uh, stainless steel fabrication plant that's perfect for, yeah. you know, breaking down uh, water and turning it to oxygen. But for whatever reason, it never occurred to him, hey, I should build a, a liquid oxygen plant. Nope. Not necessary. I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. Why none of these co space companies are have built their own liquid oxygen supplies. Well, yeah, so uh, what I wanted to this kind of off topic, but what was the, uh, one of the solutions, though, for all the space debris? Uh, I mean, there's nets. Are there any? Oh, for the telescopes? Or, yeah, just, or just to clean up, like, non-functional satellites. Nets, lasers, magnets. Actually, India, or somebody, or maybe it's Israel, they're setting up a satellite in the future. I was doing, when I was reading my, uh, thesis, when I was doing research yeah. for my thesis paper, uh, they were gonna send one up with basically, uh, magnets, and they were gonna go and, like, pick up all this space debris but it was just i don't know it was the it, it was the, the way it was designed you'd have to like because like you could use old satellites to do it oh no they were going to use it to decommission old satellites that's what they were doing oh they were building a system to decommission old satellites but satellites have to be built with this adapter to let them do that mm. and i'm like oh, that's kind of so theirs was like preventing further space debris, yeah. not cleaning enough. But no, yeah, lasers, nets, it's about the only options right now. Let them run their course and burn up. 
which will never happen with some of the debris. Yeah. Like all those copper needles that are in orbit because mm-hmm. of the U.S. Did I ever tell you about that? No. It was they were pra- they were do- they were testing like a radar, like blocker or something. Not yeah. radar. It would have been like uh, some sort of. I don't know, something to stop ICBMs, I think. Yeah. Anyways, they literally just launched a rocket up and dispersed a million copper needles. What? Into into orbit. I don't know. So now there's all these copper needles in orbit. Oh my gosh. I mean, this was in the 50s, so it's hard to say how many are still left. But there's there's a good chance there are. So I wonder what it'd be like to go up into. Oh, well, I guess Bezos was up in space. I wonder if you saw. Yeah, actually, degrees. so I learned Virgin Galactic didn't go above the Kármán line. I thought it did. No, Virgin Galactic get, got nowhere close. Would they got? What did they do? Fifty miles or they're uh, like eighty miles. What is the Kármán line? Oh, what is the? What, oh, I was thinking kilometers. My bad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the. Uh, actually, I learned what the karma line is based off of. Yeah. It's the point where uh, drag starts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the point where you're no longer flying because of drag, and it's... Um, uh, yeah, 100 kilometers. Yeah, it only went like 80 kilometers. Oh, really? Yeah. Bezos went like just above 100 kilometers. Then what was the, like, 62 miles or whatever? I don't know. Maybe that's like a future plan. No, 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 no. I, I thought I, it was At least from miles. this source, anyways. So I thought. Yeah, 62 miles. Virgin Galactic took the girl that high. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm opening a whole bunch of chrome tabs. Uh, Galactic. Uh, Space flight. I was gonna. I wanted to type height. No. Oh. Uh. Oh, they went to fifty miles. Yep, eighty kilometers. Ah. I see. Yeah, I'm sure they'll probably get Wait, up there at some point. They will earn there. Space, what? I thought they weren't going... That, I think this space.com must not know about the update. Yeah. The, but Although, they might have gotten it before. Didn't Virgin this Galactic... 2021. Yeah, but no, didn't Virgin Galactic launch before Bezos? Oh, they might have, yeah. The day... They might have done it, like, the day before well, uh, the change. Bezos was, like, the day of... Because I think that was the whole thing. Yeah, the, the FCC changed it because the of the FFA Bezos. was like, yeah, no, you don't get your wings or whatever because you have to do some thing to demonstrate space flight safety. Yeah, or something for humanity. Yeah. Some bullcrap. Anyways, as I, uh, as I said, so yeah, I don't, yeah, so space debris is a real problem. But, uh, so what were you saying about going to space? Uh... I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder how much, how many satellites he saw. I don't and then you were like, know. actually, he didn't go into space. So, but Bezos, I don't know. I wonder how many if he saw satellites. I doubt space. it. Yeah. Because like, even though there's a lot of them, they're pretty. F- they're pretty sparsely. Yeah. I mean, mm. you could hit one if you didn't plan it right. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> the, the likelihood still. Not yeah, impossible, yeah, I didn't but have still. one of them go through your engine. Yeah, actually, the this the uh, the arm on the ISS did get hit recently by a chunk of space debris. Oh, really? Yeah, a hole right through it. And uh, how's it doing? It's fine. Is it gonna need repairs? No, uh, they'll probably repair it at some point, but it's fine. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot the the space arm is made by Canada, so Canada was in charge of like, yeah, it's fine. Well, great Canada. <laughs> Canadian, no dissing Canada. Canadians like I'd be fine. No, not dissing Canada. <laughs> ISS still go. Brr. <laughs> yeah, sorry that I'm obsessed with space news. It's all that's in my feed anymore. I I've only really ever been interested in space news, anyways. Yeah. No, but back to these telescopes. It just upsets me that they're not going to have a replacement for Hubble. At least they don't have anything planned. 
And so it's like, none of these ground-based telescopes are actually, they're also based infrared. They're not really, they could put a sensor in, it'd be pretty easy yeah. for uh, visible light. Uh, but none of them are planning for, yeah, for visible light. And I, that just mm -hmm. irritates me because it's like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're talking about the only thing that this one will get to do better than the one on the ground. I don't remember what it was. Because the atmosphere isn't a problem. It was something else. Oh, maybe it was, well, just uh, hours of operation and longer exposures. Mm -hmm. I think that might be what it was. Just that this gets to take a longer exposure. I see. Because it can technically do it infinitely long exposure. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think, well, because, like, you know, ground based one. 12 yeah. hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the longest night will be in Chile. Well, so you'd have to... Well, if you wanted infinitely long hours, then you'd have to be in a... This is going to L2. Oh, oh it's just going to sit in L2. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Far from the sun or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, James Love's going to sit in L2. It's also where the Roman telescope's going to sit as well. Mm. Actually, and I, I also learned... I didn't know, but uh, the space gravity telescopes, those aren't planned for 2030. Really? Yeah. I'm like, what seems to be the problem, Europe? <laughs> Is it the figuring out how to get lasers to shoot each other in space? Because <laughs> SpaceX has already figured that out. What seems to be the problem? And actually, I didn't know, but the gravity telescopes haven't been running in like a year. Really? Because of COVID. They got shut down because of COVID. Seems about right. So, uh, well, they're doing upgrades then. They're going to make it more precise. I'm like, what, what's the point? They're literally the most precise instruments on the face of the planet. Like, more let's, precise. Let's make them more precise. Yeah. Just so that we have to make another algorithm to sift through even more noise. Yeah. Because we made it more precise. So we get more noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. I think so. Yeah, I find it funny that so the U.S. is the only place with gravity telescopes. But then we're not the ones making the space gravity telescopes. That's Europe. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, mixed priorities here, U.S. Because aren't they going to put those gravity ones in the orbit around the moon or something? I don't know. I thought that was the plan. Put them out by the moon. No, but yeah, I was. I learned a lot about SpaceX. and So actually... So SpaceX won this bid, and it's the you know for the NASA's moon mission, yeah. and it's fascinating how this story worked. So basically, NASA. Was Wait, where, where do you read all this source? Uh, so I some of it's in these articles I get here on Google News, and then some of it uh, I got from a YouTuber called Scott Mangley. Oh. Everything I'm about to tell you is from him, and so here's what happened. So NASA. Was like, okay, we, we, they got all these bids in, looking at all the money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, how much money is the government giving us? The government's like, you get a billion dollars. And they're like, oh. <laughs> they look at, they just go, well, SpaceX, you're the cheapest. <laughs> you win! <laughs> you win! <laughs> Which is why, uh, kind of, and so I think that's also why uh, Bezos is going to lose. It's because NASA literally doesn't even have the money to pay. Uh, it's going to have to go... Over twice the amount just to pay SpaceX. Yeah. But it can't. and Because SpaceX is like $2.4 billion for theirs. Mm -hmm. But the reason why theirs are the cheapest is because they're already. They're, they're, most of the this rocket design is coming out of their pocket. Yeah, yeah. Because they're already planning their lander anyways. Mm -hmm. So and I thought they were going to use super he the, the, hoop, the, set, the heavy boosters to launch them into space. No. They don't need them? N no, because NASA is just going to use their... So, like, they built the SLS, right? This this, yeah, this yeah. is their moon and Mars rocket they're building. Yeah. Well, they... that You know, there was planned to probably pick the United Launch Alliance or this other company. Mm -hmm. 
Well, now they didn't get to pick any of those. Now they picked a company that actually has the capability to put it in orbit themselves. But they spent billions of dollars on this rocket. It's right here. You want it? So they're just like, uh, you're just going to ship us the Starship part? We're going to just plop it on top and launch it that way. So, like, now they have to, like, build an adapter for it to sit on top. And, like, it's... Hmm. Because so, NASA's building the the biggest rocket ever, yeah. And the whole there was a whole the whole upper stage the whole thing was gonna be built by like multiple companies. And nope, now it's just plopping a SpaceX Starship on top. That's like spe specially built for the moon. So it's gonna have like it's gonna have big land uh, like landers because yeah. t usually it was designed to go through the Martian atmosphere or to go through the Earth atmosphere. So it has to be nice and slim. It, I guess they don't plan for it to come back to Earth. So mm -hmm. it doesn't need any, like, heat shielding or anything like that. It just needs, oh. like, big uh, big uh, landers to land on the moon. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, it's nice because they get, like, way more space than they had before. So, like, because, like, all these other ones, they're, like, these super, like, kind of small, intricate things. Yeah, yeah. Like, the one that was built by, like, five companies that was part of Bezos was part of, they had, like, oh, it would, they had to, like, detach and reattach and orbit and rearrange a bunch of ways. Yeah. And then land this thing. It was also going to require a refueling thing. I mean, the, actually, all the plans required them to be refueled. And... However, the reason why SpaceX is also one is because their refueling is in Leo. Wow. The other companies, their refueling was in orbit on the around the moon. I see. Now they only required one refueling mission, as where SpaceX requires like twelve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have to launch. So to launch one rocket to the moon, they have to launch thirteen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole point about this rapid reusability. The super heavy booster lands, gets refueled. The, st uh, the starship part lands, gets mm -hmm. plopped right back on top, gets refueled, and gets launched again. Yeah. And NASA kind of liked the plan better, despite the fact that it takes a lot more refueling. But A, they get a lot more room. And B, uh, it's in Leo. So if something goes wrong, they can bring them home. Or mm -hmm. send people up there to help them. Yeah. It, it's pretty easy. The moon. Something goes wrong. You're SOL. Mm -hmm. You're on the moon. Well, I mean, it's only like a four-day journey back, right? You yeah. can walk. This is the whole thing about like now you like can we walk. can't repair things. Like we can't repair these telescopes. We can't do this and that. I'm kind of finding that more and more bullcrap excuses. They can't uh, fix these telescopes and stuff because... Once Starship's out, I feel like Starship can go and repair this, can yeah. go and put Hubble back up into a higher orbit, fix uh, all the stuff that's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Cause like, so like, even if they do put Hubble in a higher orbit, it's only got like a 20 year lifespan, something with the mirror or something. That's going to be no good after 20 years. Yeah. But, like, they could repair it if they wanted to, I guess, with Starship. I'm just saying Starship is like having the shuttle again. Plus, you have a deep space rocket now, theoretically. So, I'm just like, I, this, yeah. oh, they're on the moon. We can't help them? Uh, no, no, it's kind of bullcrap because of the way Elon's designed this thing. It's like, you call him up, it's like, hey, we need a rocket today. You'll have a rocket today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm like... <laughs> So I think we're kind of actually to the point where you go to space, something goes wrong, you could actually get rescued. I don't know. I think I think this whole thing, like, oh, we can't fix it, so once it's there, it's there. I'm like, maybe on Mars, but L2, yeah, yeah. Leo, you can fix it. There are times, like, if you can fix it in Leo, I think you can fix it if it's on the moon. Anyways, yeah. Lots of interesting space news, so... Any other questions about these telescopes? No. 
<laughs> yeah, they're they're all for infrared, so they're gonna see some really cool stuff, do some really cool science stuff, some really cool dark matter and black. Actually, there's some latest research that came out. You yeah. should actually really watch this uh, YouTuber. Uh, you'd like her. Ah, here she is, Doctor Becky. Well, I heard I, I've seen a video or two about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I I started watching her. Uh, she has this uh, night sky monthly news. And she gives, like, stuff to go look at at night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are some of the big things to look at? Well, uh, just the other night, literally just the other night, we could have, if we had our telescopes out, we could have watched the shadows of Jupiter's moons go across Jupiter. Really? Yeah. Oh, that would have been cool. Also, it's a great red spot uh, here in September, but we're not going to be able to see it. It's too late. Wait, it's not September yet. Yeah, but, like, because it was, like... I don't know, the way it, the when it was going to happen, we weren't going to see it. Oh. Just because of the time of the night and the look. It was like for Europe, so I don't think we would have oh. seen it. Anyways, uh, yeah, you should che definitely check her out. She's got some really cool stuff. But anyway, she talked about some latest research in her Night Sky News. Uh -huh. uh, there's reasons to believe that Sagittar uh, Sagittarius A star is not a black hole. Really? They said that they were watching with the telescope, with telescopes, this uh, gas cloud that was going to get close to the uh, the black hole. And so they modeled how it would behave. It didn't behave like that. Really? And the only model that would suggest that it behaved like that, now they have to do lots of other research, they're going to have to look at other stuff, is that it's dark matter. That the center of our Milky Way is a giant clump of dark matter. Really? Yeah. I'm like, holy crap. I mean, if the data comes back, we've confirmed the existence of... Well, we've... That's another check mark on the existence of dark matter. Now, we still mm -hmm. have to detect wimps, but... Yeah. That's a... There's something out there that we can't see. Yeah. But there it is, dark matter, staring us in the face. Didn't, wait, but didn't we have a picture of a black hole? Yeah, and they're actually well. They're is that not a picture of a black hole? They're they're next. They're working on getting. Uh, that's actually LIGO's next target. Oh really? Yeah, the gravity, all the radio telescopes. Yeah, that's the next target. But the problem is, there's so much dust. Oh. That there, it's taking a long time to sift the information, but the next black hole image is Sagittarius A. I see. And that could answer the question, is it a black hole? Yeah. Because I think I told you the whole reason to believe dark matter is a thing is because when you do the math... Galaxies, yeah, and how they spin. When you do the math and calculate... Basically, it's like spinning a child around, you know? If when you spin a child around, you have to have a certain grip. <laughs> we got, we if you have to, this a bit more. Oh. If you have too loose of a grip, so we're spinning on, well uh, on a swing set. If you have, and we grip, have aluminum. Okay, so, you're spin, so you're holding Will's hand, spinning him around. No, no, right? no. Wings, Will's on a swing set with aluminum hooks. Okay. But if Will weighs too much, basically, wait, let me just finish what I'm saying, right? If your grip is too loose. Too weak of a grip. Will flies off. Will no longer the stays. The hooks break. Will no longer keeps spinning around you. You need a strong enough grip to hold Will in place. We have that math. Newton gave us that math. We can calculate the mass of all the star. Well, we can get a rough estimate of all the stars. And then we can get an estimate of how big of a star or how big of a mass we would need to keep all of our mass in orbit. Yes, Hubble. Well, the problem is, the mass at the center is not enough. There's not enough mass there to keep everything in orbit. And so, why is everything in orbit instead of flying off tangent to its path? There must be some extra non-visible mass, non mass that we're not accounting for. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, the math is also non-visible, yeah. Dark matter. Yeah, we don't have that math yet. Yeah, Hubble did all this. Yeah. Actually, he did dark energy and dark matter. 
He did dark energy, yeah. A lot. Who, he, he, who, did, who did dark matter? I thought Hubble also did that. He might have also done, done that. Because, I mean, if you're already looking at how f far galaxies are going away from you, you might have also done the galaxy spinning thing. Yeah, because basically, Hubble showed that our galaxy was accelerating. Yeah. Accelerating, um, accelerating. And then, in the early 2000s, they found that the rate of accelerating is also increasing. Square to square. That's called the... Uh, jerk or whatever the fourth, third derivative or is that what it is? Third derivative. It would be a third derivative, yeah. It is third derivative. Mm. S cubed, seconds mm. cubed. Yay. Is positive. That's not good. Why? <laughs> what do you mean why? Well, that means we'll have the big rip. I don't want the big rip. You want the big crunch? I don't want either one. Or do you just want infinite expansion? I don't, want, I, I don't want any of that. So, I just want the universe to just stop. What? <laughs> and then we just, you know, the yeah, so finite they, number of space like that. Oh, so, so you would have the big chill. Yeah. The big chill. Yeah. Well, that's much more comforting. That's trillions of years. The, the of big trill. Hundreds of, the big that, that's chill. That's, quint, that's septillions of years instead of quintillions of years. Yeah, see, it's funny much more it's comforting. The heat death. Yeah. The end of heat. Instead of no getting septillions of years, I get only quintillions of years, and I don't like that. I'd much rather have the ability that I could live for septillions of years instead of quintillions of years. Yeah. Me, I, I'm more of like the decades kind of guy. You're gonna, yeah, no, but I don't plan to die. <laughs> I plan to see Jesus. If I even get so much as one more decade, that's too much. That could be arranged. <laughs> we'll take you out west. I'll pull a bullet between your eyes, and we'll call it good. And I would be very content. Or did you see? Uh, did you see PewDiePie's latest video with the drain cleaner chick who wanted to be blind? Oh no, that wasn't PewDiePie. That was Poncho. Poncho. Yeah, there was this chick that wanted to be blind, so she blind herself with drain cleaner. What? Yeah. Yeah. Sodium hydroxide. Fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, do you ever watch Cinnamon Toast Ken? I've watched a few of his videos. Yeah, some good ones. Yeah, those are yeah, some of those are pretty good. They're just more, they're just a continuation of the they're, PewDiePie. Yeah, it's more PewDiePie, but but he, I like PewDiePie's editing better. Sive's much better editor than them. Whoever does Ken's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He does have some interesting effects. <laughs> yeah, but anyways. But yeah, but no, it's really exciting that Sagittarius A might be dark matter. That there's a possibility that at some point so, that the that, dark matter the, will condense into a black hole. But doesn't that photo not look like a black hole, though? You can literally see the accretion disk. You can't see on Sagittarius A. So what was the accretion disk that we photographed? Well, that was, uh... M87. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I have that was Sagittarius. M87 is the one we took a black hole picture of. The yeah. next black hole picture is Sagittarius A. And Sagittarius A, that's, it would also explain oh. why we've never seen Sagittarius A star mm -hmm. have an accretion disk or ever spout out uh, Yeah, I guess I swear you should, yeah, technically you can't photograph a black hole. Because photograph a black hole, you know, all the light just... My photons went away. You know? What you photograph... Hey, hey, we've actually, just recently, we, found, we detected photons from the other side of a black hole. Oh, really? The, yes. Uh, Hawking radiation? No, no, no. Photons from the other side. They went and went. They got caught by its gravity, went whoop, and curved around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The photon sphere. Yeah. But the, but they didn't. But the, this wasn't Hawking radiation. No, well, yeah. Hawking radiation is. From the black hole. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm sure we've detected that, but this was. I don't know from, if we have. Either way, this confirms uh, relativity once again. Yeah. <laughs> Einstein was right. Another check in the box. But yeah. no. But I'll be. But we've never seen Sagittarius A ever. It's been. It's a very quiet black hole. If it's a black hole, because we've never seen accretion disk. We've never seen uh, spouts of X rays. Yeah. It's never done any of this. We're watching other uh, black holes all across the universe that do it all the time. Sagittarius A very quiet. So there's a there's a suspicion that it's dark matter. Mm. Wouldn't that be cool? If I mean, 
doesn't confirm the existence. I mean, I guess if it confirms the existence of something that we don't know. It just so we can confirm dark matter from gravitational waves, though. Well, they're not, sorry, they're gonna use the the Event Horizon Telescope, not LIGO. My bad. Oh. The Event Horizon, t and what does that do? That's the one they use to take a picture of M87. Oh, and they're gonna try to take a picture of Sagittarius. They've been working on it. The problem is all the dust. Yeah, it's also really far away. M87 is a lot further. Well, is it really? Away. Yeah. M87 is in a different oh. galaxy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sagittarius A is just hop, skip, and it'll jump across the pond. No, but what I'm saying, though, is, like, we're on the outer ring of the Milky Way. Yeah. So if M87... So what I'm saying, though, is, like, if the core, if the center's here, we're on the outer edge, M87 could just be passing by. It's my... You, the closest <laughs> galaxy is Andromeda. And, and Andromeda is, like, right here. Okay. And I'm just yeah. passing by. What I'm saying I is, I don't even know if you, so what I'm saying is, centers here, M87 is just kind of passing okay. by. That's a much clearer okay. picture. Okay, M87 might not even be in the local group. Oh, it's not even in the what do we call it? Virgin cluster. Well, that's the local group. Yeah. So it's a long ways. No, away. Wait, the Virgin super cluster. Is that what it is? The super cluster. I don't know. Either way, it's a long ways away. Uh, so. Yeah, Sagittarius is a lot closer. So we'll be, I'll be curious to see what the Event Horizon Telescope uh, shows. However, you do have all the other stuff passing in front of it, though. Well, yeah. Because so see, M cause see, from here to M87, right, it's, it's nothing. You're on the outer... You're looking out the back room window. Right, the, the, that's what they're saying. There's a lot of dust. Dust. The stars aren't the problem. It's the dust. Yeah. Because the radio waves can, you know... And so what, they're going to wait for the dust to clear out? No, they're no, no, wait no. Millions, millions they're using all the dust to no, They're using no plan. algorithms to clear the dust. Oh. Yeah, let's just wait millions and millions just, for all the dust to coalesce into a planet. That's right in front of our field of view. But it's just it's just taking time. But anyways, uh, well then at that point it might coalesce into a black hole. Because dark matter technically will do that. It'll coalesce into a black hole? That's one of the theories about supermassive black holes, how they form, is they all came from dark matter. Because mm. dark matter interacts with gravity just the same way as regular matter. It just doesn't interact with regular matter. Yeah. It acts At the, all. Yeah. As far as we're of, it acts the same way, does everything the same way. It just doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. So anyways... Uh, well, that'd be interesting to see if we get a picture of Sagittarius A. That'll... Oh, but there was something else I wanted to say, but oh well. It's gone now.